Good day, everyone, and welcome to the July Community Call and Monthly Roundup for the WitNet community. Thank you all for joining the uh, Community Call recording here on YouTube. Uh, we will also have the Monthly Roundup article posted on our blog later today or uh, the day after this video is released. Um, the Community Call was on uh, July 26th, which was a Wednesday, and we believe the next one for August is going to be in the last week of August on the Wednesday, which is the uh, 30th, so we hope to see you there. Um, once again, thanks for joining the recording here, and um, without further ado, we'll jump into it. We had a really busy month in July with a lot of in-depth research on proposals like proof of stake and tokenomics and some exciting integrations and partnerships along with development of uh, some of our products. Um, as, like I said, there's going to be um, the blog on the, there's going to be the blog post of the monthly roundup that'll, ha that'll include links and uh, resources that you guys can refer to uh, and also posting some of that stuff in the description down below. Uh, if you have any questions, please visit our Telegram or Discord or our Twitter direct messages. Uh, ask them there. And then if you have any advice for how these videos should be um, done differently, please send that my way. Uh, without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's begin with chain integrations. So these are chains that the WitNet Oracle went live on in July. Uh, this month we added support for Gnosis Testnet and Boba BNB Mainnet. So we went live on Boba BNB Testnet uh, in May, I believe, or June, excuse me. Um, so with Gnosis Testnet, we added the price feeds of DAI USD and WIT USDT. Uh, and then for Boba BNB Mainnet, we added new price feeds of BNB USDT, BNB, or excuse me, Boba to USDT and WIT to USDT. So that's two new WIT price feeds. Uh, along with the one we added on um, the BOBA testnet. So um, we're exciting, excited to see those uh, WIT USDT price feeds grow as we integrate onto new uh, and exciting chains. So next up is the upcoming chains. This was the integration pipeline we announced uh, back in June, and uh, nothing's changed with that. We have Obscuro to be uh, launched next, Mantle after that, and Phantom is last. Uh, of course, we're carefully monitoring the uh, situation over there with Phantom and a lot of these other multi-chain um, uh, blockchain networks that were affected by the multi-chain hack is what I should say. Uh, it seems like there uh, is a lot of liquidity on those bridges that is not able to come off. Um, so some of these chains are um, having issues. So we want to carefully monitor those so that we don't launch um, price feeds on these chains and they don't get any usage. So. Um, like I said, Obscuro, Mantle, Phantom. Phantom is up in the air right now as things are uh, progressing. We'll now get into the ecosystem news. Uh, it's news from around the Web3 world. First up is the Pool Together community run Staked ETH Pool. It hit a huge milestone of one fully funded water well with no loss to depositors. So if you're not familiar with how uh, the Pool Together protocol works, you essentially deposit money into the protocol, that uh, money earns a yield collectively with every other depositor, and the, um, the winner is paid with the yield that's generated. Uh, so this, this works the same, except it's running, um, it's being ran by the community. Uh, users deposit staked ETH and generate, the, the yield generated is um, divided in half, with half going to two different uh, players and the other half going to uh, the donation, which is WaterAid. Moderate America. Um, so, the, um, excuse me, I lost my train of thought here. Oh, yes, okay, so, uh, of course, this game is running on the uh, Witnet Randomness Oracle to decide the uh, two winners that uh, get the payout on a weekly basis. That's very exciting. We're happy to be part of this. We actually offered a grant and some early liquidity to this protocol, so we're very excited to be part of it. Uh, as it's grown. Next up is the Let's Exchange integration. The WIT coin was listed on Let's Exchange, a swap with website that allows you to swap WIT for any supported asset. Let's Exchange currently supports around 3,000 different assets that users can choose from. So it's very exciting to see because it helps increase liquidity and trading volume of the WIT coin, and it can also be a plug-in for um, later iterations of the WITnet uh, wallets. So super exciting. Next up, we have SimpleSwap, another integration. 
Um, this time it has around 600 different assets you can swap in and out of with WIT. Um, so both of these different exchanges provide great services like increasing liquidity, like volume, like I said, and it's a way to uh, show that tier one exchanges, um, that WIT is a more liquid coin with a higher uh, community engagement, pe more people trading it. So it's fantastic. Head over to those platforms and um, take a look at them. Very cool stuff. Next up is the Blockchain Oracle Summit. So we had a presence and a booth at the Blockchain Oracle Summit that we shared with the folks over at Teller. Uh, we also had our technical lead, Tomas, give a talk on developing oracles in the multi-chain world. Tomas talked about the complications and the potential solutions that we see over at Widnet because we're one of the only oracles that's on a layer one, if not the only one. Uh, it was a very insightful presentation, and since you're already on YouTube, you should check it out. We have it live. It's about 15 minutes, so it's very uh, brief, and he packs a lot of information in there, so I would definitely take a look if you can. We also uh, had a presence at FCC where we were more of a business development focus. We sent uh, Adan and Tomas. Um, it's one of the most well-known Ethereum conferences in the world. Uh, and they said that this year was an um, exciting year full of uh, layer two scaling discussions, zero knowledge proof discussions, and uh, different types of roll-ups. And next year it's going to be in Br uh, Brux, Brux I can't pronounce that because uh, I'm a silly American, Bruxels. Brussels, I, I don't know. Give me a break on that one. Uh -huh. But um, so that's an exciting one. We'll see uh, for the FCC seven, I believe it will be uh, a totally different location. So we also did a Twitter space with Teller during the Blockchain Oracle Summit, uh, since we were sharing a table with them. So we wanted to host uh, the CEO of Teller, Brenda Loya. We had a great turnout with nearly 200 people uh, listening throughout the call. Uh, it was mainly focused on how to develop crypto economic incentive, how to create a stable protocol for data, and the differences between Witnet and Teller. So very interesting. We actually we had Brenda and uh, Adon to discuss that. It was about 45 minutes, and it's on our Twitter. You should check it out um, before it gets buried too much in tweets. Next up is the uh, community creation challenge. So this. This week, the WitNet community raised over 60,000 WitCoins to run a community creation challenge that would reward community members who talk about WitNet on Twitter and create different types of content. So it's a really interesting um, community-funded thing, 30K for people who make a nice graphic, 20K for people who uh, tweet something, tweet, create a tweet thread relating to, tweet thread relating to WitNet, excuse me, it's early in the morning here. Uh, getting caught up on my words. 10,000 is uh, for people who make a singular tweet about WitNet and um, what it's doing. So of course these different um, these different tiers allow you to get creative and have some fun on what you want to talk about with with regards to WitNet and um, you know it's, it'll be judged by the community and then the payout will be made directly to your Wit wallet. So um, we want to thank our community member Petre for uh, giving this exciting idea uh, for kind of starting up the uh, entire thing and then allowing us to just uh, run with it. So um, shout out to Petre. And if you guys want to uh, participate and get a chance to win any of these tiers, uh, please send us a DM on Twitter or uh, direct message me directly on Telegram. You can find me in the uh, WitNet community channel. So this actually ends next Tuesday, August 1st, so we're trying to get as many submissions in by then. Next up, we'll move into some My Wit Wallet updates. So, this first one is more of an update for uh, Sheikah and My Wit Wallet. So, you um, Sheikah now supports QR codes for XPRVs. So, if you would like to um, import your seed phrase into My Wit Wallet from Sheikah, you can now directly just scan a QR code from your Sheikah, and it will import directly into My Wit Wallet. <coughs> Keep in mind this is still experimental, and there's currently a known bug, it might even be fixed by now, but it's worth it to know that if you have a lot of um, transactions in your Sheikah, you might end up finding this bug. Just always make sure you have um, multiple backups of your seed phrase. Next up is the continued support for full nodes within my Wit Wallet. This allows anyone to use their own node uh, to verify their own transactions and inter interact with the network, so they don't actually have to trust anyone else's node. This is great for the Block Explorer too because it would um, uh, it'll lower the traffic that's required um, when people want to 
use my wit wallet because my wit wallet runs on the um, block explorer and lastly lastly with with the addition of support for nodes um, there's an ability to stake within the wallet of course right now proof of stake isn't uh, rolled out on witnet so that hasn't been rolled out via the wallet yet um, it's still in an ex early exploration phase but once we add the support for full nodes we can uh, add support for staking directly in the wallet um, and obviously that has to proof of stake has to be fully implemented and stable before that happens but with the additions of these um, we will be able to do that in the future sometime soon. Last up will be grant program updates. Uh, Doodow.dev went live this month on Moonbeam and Polygon. They're using Witnet to get public APIs via GitHub to track contributions to tasks within their uh, DAO. This, is, uh, this use case is called parameterized data requests and it's the first of its kind that we've seen on the Witnet Oracle, so super exciting. It was, as soon as they told us their idea, we wanted to fund them. That was back in like February, I believe. So we funded them 5000 for the completion of their product and we'll continue to support them in any way uh, necessary, even beyond financial um, assistance. So very exciting there. Also, uh, Pocket Demons. Um, this is the unfortunate news that we had to withdraw the grant from the Pocket Demons team. They were asking for 10000 in funding that we agreed to over the course of eight months for two separate uh, blockchain games on the Kronos ecosystem using WitNet. Uh, they didn't uh, hit their milestones in time um, and that they set for themselves so we had to withdraw the opportunity and of course we left the, the door open with the ability to reapply when their project is ready uh, at this time nothing has been funded that is all for the month of July uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and we'll get to them as soon as we can um, and uh, we'd love to see you in our community so please check out um, our Twitter discord Telegram, and um, our Reddit. So uh, thank you for joining the community call, and we hope to see you live at the next one.